Hey kids, Sarah Cray here with Let's Make Art and we are painting dinosaurs today. Woo! Yay! <laughs> so I, um, today specifically we are doing the Brontosaurus. I don't know what noise they would make. <laughs> good, it's good. Um, do you wanna come back here? This is Michael, he's filming. I'll be talking to him. That's who just made the dinosaur noise. Sometimes he has facts. We're married, so we're good. It's good. <laughs> okay, so for this project, we are going to do it in three steps. Um, our very first step is we are going to do a wet on wet technique, which is putting in the green and the blue. Our second step is we're just gonna fill in the body. And the third step is if you wanna put these texture wrinkles or um, kind of anything else to make this dinosaur yours, you are free to do it in that step. Um, our supplies that we have, which should be included in your kid's kit, is our paint set with a paintbrush, which is a round seven and just a cup of water. That's all you need. You ready to go? And a good attitude. And a good attitude. <laughs> so before we get started, we are going to do our oath. So Michael, you're gonna have to say this with me and Taylor, who's also in the room, is also gonna have to say this. So if everyone can raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And, and I, I promise, promise to, have to have fun. Thank you. And I like to start with our oath because it's just a reminder. It's not about it being perfect. It's not about it looking exactly like mine. It's just about exploring and having fun and trying new things and being brave, just having fun with it. So we're going to get right into it. So the colors that I use for this dinosaur, I focus mainly on the blues and the greens but again this is your project so you can make these whatever colors you want you can do rainbow you do all of that fun stuff so really feel free and for wet on wet what that means is I get my paintbrush wet and then I'm going to hit it off the side of my cup because I don't want my paintbrush dripping everywhere and making a mess so I'm going to take my wet paintbrush and you can start on the top or the bottom it doesn't matter and I'm just going to put water down. Now, whatever color you want the top of your dinosaur to be, that's what color I'm gonna grab now. So I'm gonna grab some blue. And you can also mix these colors. So if you want like a blue green, you can take your blue and just mix it right on this pan. And you're just gonna go along the edge of where you put that water. And you'll see that it's gonna to start to spread in that water too. And if it's not spreading out as much as you would like, there is absolutely nothing wrong with you kind of moving the colors around in the water. Sometimes I talk to it and just say like, come on little fella, move around, you know? Help it move if it doesn't want to. Sometimes it does it on its own and sometimes it doesn't. And I'm just gonna be repeating that process. So I'm taking some water getting the area wet. And you wanna work pretty quick because your water could dry. And then I'm just dropping in the color. Okay. So I did the top part of my dinosaur and now I'm gonna to move to the bottom part and it's just gonna be repeating the same thing except doing it on the bottom part. So I'm just gonna take my wet paintbrush, put water, and it is gonna run into your top part, especially on this neck because this neck is thinner and that is totally okay. And this part I'm gonna do green. Sarah. Yes. Guess how long it took a brontosaurus to be full grown for them to look like little adults. Guess how old they were? How old? 10. 10 years? It took them 10 years and they were full grown. Do you know how tall they are? Yeah, well they're 75 feet long. They're 75 feet long? Yeah, it's about 25 feet to their head. That's like a as big as a house. Is that right? Mm. <laughs> I don't know how size a is. A small house. A smaller house? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay, now when I'm doing the under part of the dinosaur, I'm gonna actually skip the legs. And I'm gonna, so I did the neck, and I'm gonna go straight to the belly. Again, I'm just getting it wet, nice and wet, grabbing some green. And remember, you can make this dinosaur whatever color you want. Are there like, do we, this might be a silly question, but can we tell the color of things? So we have no idea what colors well, they were really. What we do is we look at things that are still alive that uh -huh. share DNA with dinosaurs. Uh -huh. um, funny enough, one of them is chickens or other birds in the raptor family, like hawks and vultures and things like that. So it's totally, is it totally possible that this dinosaur could in fact be covered in, in feathers? feathers? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> like a lot of raptors, like uh, T-Rexes and actual little raptors and stuff, they're now drawn with feathers on them. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So but you could add feathers to your dinosaur and that could be right. They have found some preserved dinosaurs with skin on them, which uh -huh. is crazy because they're millions of years old. Yeah, that is totally great. I didn't they, know that. If they fall into like a tar pit or something, they can't decompose and so they just have skin oh. on them. So what was the, is it like a skeletal reptilian, reptilian like a snake? Like a snake or like a, one of those, what are those big gross giant dragon lizards? Iguanas? No, bigger than that. A uh, dragon. Something dragon. Oh, I know what you're talking about. They have like <laughs> the teeth. They have these. <laughs> I can't, I'm, my brain is not going to find that word, but if you find it. I'll think about it. Okay, say it out loud. Okay, so I'm finishing up the tail now. And then if you want to, um, a, a nice thing that I like to do at this point is I kind of want to blend my two sides together because maybe your waters didn't touch and you have like a white space on your dinosaur. So just take the time to work your, you're just going to, this is a clean brush, there's no color on it. And I'm just kind of working the areas back and forth to make sure that my entire middle dinosaur is painted. Okay. And you can make your dinosaur more colorful than this by just adding more paint. I really only added paint on the edge and used water to spread it out so it's a really light color. But if you want your dinosaur to be really like a lot of color, a lot of color, then you can paint the whole area with the paint. It's totally up to you. Okay, so then now that I got to my legs, I finished the body, I'm gonna do the same thing to my legs and my head, which is just adding water and going along the edge like the outline, and letting that water spread. Now the reason why I did not want to continue my stomach line over my leg is because then it would seem like the leg is behind the stomach and we want it to be clear that the leg actually grows out of the stomach area. Does that make sense? Okay, <laughs> that sounds really weird, but it's accurate. And then I'm gonna add another layer of color because that just was a little bit too light for me. It's a tangent, but you wanna hear a Komodo dragon fact? Yes, I do. Scientists thought they were venomous for years because when you get bit by one, you usually get sick and die. Uh -huh. It turns out that they just have very yucky mouths. Oh, like dirty, a lot of bacteria. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Well, has anyone died from a Komodo dragon oh, bite? Oh yeah, they eat people. Oh, they eat people. Yeah, they're big, they eat cows. Where do they live? A little island, Komodo Island, I don't know. Oh, okay, so like if I live in Florida, I'm not no, looking out for like a Indonesia Komodo dragon. Look. Yeah, Indonesian island, Okay. There's a few of them. So if you ever go to Indonesia and you see a Komodo dragon, don't try and pet they it. They weigh 200 pounds. They weigh 200, how big are they? Like they're? Eight and a half feet long. Oh my gosh, and this, this thing is 75 feet long. Yeah. So that's like 10 of those in a row. Yeah. On this episode of Math with Sarah. <laughs> Listen, math is important. <laughs> okay, so I did my front legs and I still have my back legs. Oh, you can see here, oh friends, this is a good thing. Make sure it's on the close-up camera on this. I got my wrist in my dinosaur and it smeared my paint a little bit. That is going to happen. So just know that it happens to me too, who have been, I have been painting a very long time. So don't get too mad at yourself. But here's what you can do to help it. One thing that you can do is you can just paint like a background or land that this dinosaur is on and cover those pieces or clean your brush with just water 
and get that area wet where it kind of smeared with clean water and take a paper towel that hopefully you have handy and wipe it up. And it won't erase it completely, but it will at least lighten it to where it's not as dark. What I think, I would just leave it. Let me tell you why. Okay, tell me why. Because when you're a rich and famous artist, children watching this, mm -hmm. and future historians find your art, they will find your wrist prints and they will, it'll be worth so much it, more money. It would be worth, make sure you sign everything. Yeah. <laughs> And do you know what's so funny is I actually remember in high school, um, my friends were really adamant that I would sign my paintings or anything that I gave them as gifts because they're like, they're like one day you're going to be painting bigger stuff and I just want to have something that's signed from you. And I did not believe them, but you know, it's just funny where things take you. You never know. Don't, you still don't sign stuff. I, I really don't. It's a problem I have, but... I'm working on it. Okay, I did the head. Now we have the back legs. And I'm gonna do the back legs a little bit darker. So I'm gonna add more color. And the reason why we wanna put a little bit more color and make them darker is because we wanna be clear that they're farther away from us. And they're kind of being covered by the body. So the body would be casting a shadow on these back legs. So for this one, I'm not gonna do the wet on wet technique. I'm just gonna use my straight paint brush that has paint on it. And I want to make sure that my front leg is dry before I do this because if my front leg was really wet and then I try and paint the back leg and they accidentally touch, paint would go, the color would spread everywhere. So we want to keep it a little bit separate and a little bit dry. So there's my back leg. See how it's darker than my front leg? That's a darker value. Okay. And then same thing on this back leg. I'm not doing the wet on wet, I'm just taking my paintbrush straight to it, getting it nice and dark, just like that. Let's play my favorite segment called okay. Sarah Guesses Stuff. Okay. How long ago did Brontosaurus live? Oh, <laughs> please, please don't do this to me. Just take a guess. <laughs> please don't do this to me. I really, I have no idea. Pick a number. Like how many? How many years ago? I'm going to say 100 million years ago. Not bad, 150-ish. 150 million years ago? I was hoping you'd be like 38 years ago, <laughs> they saw one in Tennessee. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> no, well, I actually kind of cheated because earlier- You in, looked? No, in this tutorial, you said that dinosaurs are millions of years old. So I knew that we were in the millions. Some are like 30 and some are like 800. Really? Well, that's cool. <laughs> they ruled the earth forever. That is really cool. And so many things that I don't know about. So <laughs> it's great. Okay, we finished step one and two. Now our very last step is where you guys get to have a little bit more fun. So you'll notice I did not put any faces on these dinosaurs, nor did I put any backgrounds on them. And that's because I really want you guys to be able to decide how your dinosaur is feeling, or where they are and what they're doing. Um, but one thing I will show you is how you can add a little bit of texture to your dinosaur. Um, when I looked up pictures of brontosauruses, there obviously weren't any actual photographs of what they would look like because they're 150 million years old. Um, but the ones that I did see from like computer graphics and things like that was they seem to kind of have like wrinkly skin. So I put in some lines here to kind of mimic that wrinkly um, layered skin that they might have had. Or maybe he's, they had feathers. He's 10 years old. He's had a hard life. You know, I get it. <laughs> how, how big are they when they're born, do you think? I don't know. Would you like me to look? I would like you to look. I'm just so curious about the actual size. Okay. So when I do these wrinkles, I just want to make sure I do them a little bit darker so you can see them against what I've already painted. And I'm just going to kind of do curved lines with my paintbrush coming down. Now you'll notice that I'm not doing the line all the way across the body. It's just more towards the top. And I'm going to do some on the neck. And the belly. So if you're having a hard time getting a really thin line with this paintbrush, I want you to use just the tip. So I'm not pressing down really hard, I'm just using the tip. 
and I'm doing very light. I'm not, I'm not pushing on my brush very hard. I'm very lightly doing these marks. And we'll do some on the tails. The other thing I want you guys to be aware of, if you guys decide to do these little texture lines, which you don't have to because this is your dinosaur, is you can see that I'm kind of rounding these marks. They're not going straight down. They're curved a little bit because bodies are curved. If you hold your arm and you put your hand around your wrist, it's actually a circle that it's going around. It's not flat like a piece of paper. So when you're doing different textures and shapes on things that um, are round and have bodies, you want to make sure you're curving the lines a little bit to show that this um, object is round and has shape to it. Do you have the answer for the babies? Yeah, well, let's talk about this for a second. Okay. Because they come from eggs, like chickens. Okay. Or dinosaurs or reptiles. Okay. And also, baby bones and shell from eggs are very fragile. Okay. So they're hard to find fossils of said things. Right. So there's only a few. Okay. So um, the one that they found, the egg of a brontosaurus was two and a half inches long. So a little bit bigger than a chicken. That's egg. just big. So they came out, they came out about six inches long, unwrapped out of the egg. A little six inch dinosaurs. Yeah. And they gained 30 pounds a day for 10 years. Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> That is growing quickly. That's amazing. They think that dinosaurs evolved to get bigger because their predators were also evolving to get bigger. So if you were bigger than the thing that ate you, you probably survived. You were not afraid of the thing that was eating you. You just stomp on. Would them. other dinosaurs eat brontosauruses? Trying to, yeah, yeah, a lot of meat-eating dinosaurs. Meat-eating dinosaurs would eat these. I mean, little but if guys. You saw a brontosaurus, and you saw a little smaller. You know, squishy yes. dinosaur. You'd go for the other one because brontosauruses are big. Are huge. And there's a good chance they would hit you with its tail or its head. And that yeah, would maybe they use their necks like giraffes do. Yeah. Show me how. How do they do like that? Like the giraffes hit each other with their yeah. necks. Kids, they that's swing how them around. Wave their necks. <laughs> okay, so this is it for our project. Um, but maybe Michael, do you think I should add a little expression on this guy? Yeah. How do you think he's feeling? Um, he's full because he just gained 30 pounds in a day. Oh, yes. So maybe happy. Happy. Okay. I like how you associate overly full with happy. <laughs> I always am happy when I'm full. I don't know about you. So, kids, you, can, you have black here on your palette if you wanted to do eyes and mouth in the black. If it's also easier for you to maybe use a pen or a marker to do these smaller detail parts, nothing wrong with doing a pen or a marker right on top. Um, so if I want to make him happy, I would just do a little dot for an eye, like so, and then a line that's going up, like that. <laughs> maybe, maybe he would have a tongue sticking out or something like that. But um, if you want to practice on a different sheet of paper, different faces or feelings that your dinosaur can have. So our dinosaur is looking on the side, so we would just see one eye and one mouth. But maybe um, if it's angry, usually there's like a brow that's coming in to show that the brow is forward to make it angry. Um, sometimes if like dinosaurs maybe have like an an idea that's mean but makes them happy, they would be smiling, so they're kind of mischievous. <laughs> the cunning dinosaur. That you could do a sad dinosaur like that. Dinosaurs did not have eyebrows, by the way. Well, we get to do whatever we want because this is our painting. <laughs> so if you want your dinosaurs to have eyebrows, they absolutely can have eyebrows. Um, so kind of just play with what you want your dinosaur to feel like, and you can add that to it. And then you can also add backgrounds. Maybe this one is eating a tree and you wanna put a tree right here. Or maybe this one is playing with its friends, so you paint another couple ones. Or maybe it's in a pond swimming. So many different things you can do, really have fun with it. And a, another fun thing that I like to do is I like to make up a story. So it's just like, maybe this dinosaur is really happy because he is in the pool swimming with his friends. So I could paint a pool, I could do a beach ball, I can do a lot of fun stuff. So really take the time to have fun with this, make it your own, add your own background, add your own expression. Um, 
And that's it. That's it for our tutorial. So have fun with this, kids. I can't wait to see what you paint. Hopefully, if you ask mom or dad to help you out, they can share your work for uh, with us at Let's Make Art. So all you have to do is go to um, Instagram if you want to share it on Instagram and hashtag Let's Make Art or tag us at Let's Go Make Art. Or you can also share it on Facebook. So, but just make sure you have an adult help you with that. And that's it. You want to say bye to the kids? Bye, guys. <laughs>